Always a party at Patchworks. Let's get this party started. Woot, woot. Hi everyone, this is Julie from Patchworks and I'm so excited that you're joining us for another Must Sew TV here tonight at Patchworks. We have some really fun stuff planned for you tonight and you can see I have a gorgeous quilt behind me that is on loan from Cindy Vick who made this with our Gathering No Moss program that we had carried. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about that. So I would like to welcome you here tonight on this cold and rainy night. While everyone keeps on jumping in, I just wanted to give you a heads up that this Saturday, we are going to be closing an hour early because Heidi is getting married. Yay! We are so excited that Heidi's getting married and we get to go to the wedding. And so we're going to be closing at 3 o'clock instead of 4. So it's 3 o'clock on Saturday the 9th. Feb uh, not February. It feels like February out there. No. So it's April 9th. We'll be closing at 3 o'clock. But we'll be here from nine until three to be able to help with anything that you need. And then we'll be back, of course, on the following Tuesday. So let's get started with looking at what fun, fabulous fabric we have to share with you this month. So we have been waiting on a little bit of fabric, but we put together a couple packs and then we're going to review what other options we might have because you know I like to give you all the options. So for Tim Holtz, we thought we would put together a Halloween themed pack. Oh, now I know it seems to be a little bit early for Halloween, but we didn't do it last year. And so I wanted to put together that sort of ephemera looking, which also has some masculine tones in here and I made a little block for you that I'm going to share with you but I love 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 the newsprint here and you can always have skulls and everything you know so if we look here you could see potentially that you could have I mean I don't know I don't think that the skulls are Halloween at all I think they're just pure Tim and this guy here, if you don't read it, you can't see what it's about. So maybe, and you know, I'll show you how it goes together. But anyhow, I love, love, love this collection. If you know me, you know I'm in love with this and we could do this every single day, every single year, all of the time. So that one's fun. We have it available in the Fat Eighth and Fat Quarter. And then for Tula, we put together a collection of pinks. A couple months ago, we did purple which was a palette builder of Tula, which seemed to go really, really well. So we did a combination of basics, solids, and then some of her focus prints from various lines. And you'll be seeing throughout the year how we will be doing different color builders as well from her different colors around the Tula rainbow uh, fabric. So since we are shy on new offerings and we are waiting on a new arrival of, we're going to be getting in some abandoned of Tim Holtz. Also, we are get replenishing our basics and filling in some of the basics that we didn't have from him before. So we're gonna have tons and tons of Tim. I think about 40 bolts within the next month which is pretty exciting. And then um, we, of course, will be getting the Tula Tiny Beasts and probably a little bit more cave. Did you have a question for me, Tammy? So Tammy's today sitting at the, at the keyboard and Frank's behind the camera. So we wanna give you a couple other options for your fabric if you wanted something. Now remember, we always can go back into the Free Spirit Buffet and I'll show you what we have left. But then we also have a super exciting option for you this month, which we've never ever done before, but I'm super excited about, okay? So let's look overhead again and just see what we have. So we do have left from last month, the, this was our color builder that we, or our stash builder that we did that had a combination of cafe 
and Tim and solids and some Victoria Finley Wolf. We had a dot stripe and solid from Tula. Millefiore from Cape. And our calendar girls. We have that really cool quilt that has the panels that we used in there. From January and February, we have this particular Tula that we used for our plus quilt, our add it up, add it up. And then we have this really cool cafe in reds, a great cafe in green, Victoria Finley Wolf. And we do have her next line on order. And then we have some classic Tim. We have our first one that we did here and we made some more of that. That one's just really great, really masculine. I love it. And then we have a little bit softer here. So you could see between all of them, how they just all work together with the worn crock in there. And um, love, love, love it. But wait, there's more. So. If you're just joining us, all these stacks that I'm showing you are curated 12 packs that we have available in fat eighths and fat quarters. If you're in club, you get one of them at your subscription level every single month. And if you just love something that we're showing you, you absolutely can get in on any that particular month of the, you can get in I'm sorry, there's a lot of action. I'm looking out our front window and there's action outside. I apologize for my distraction. Okay, so let me show you if what other options we have this month. Okay, are we down? So let's go down. All right, so we have here what I want to show you I have some cool new wide backs available for you and our existing wide backs. And what I wanted to share with you is this month and this month only, this is super exciting. Since we are shy on our new fat packs, we are going to offer you, if you are a fat eighth size, so that's the skinny stack size, you can select one yard of wide back, a free spirit wide back of your choice. And if you are a fat stack, fat quarter, you can get two yards of the fabric of your choice, okay? If you wanted to up that because you wanted to have a three yard backing, by all means, you can add that extra yard to be able to get a continuous piece. So what we're doing is that I'm sharing with you the wide backs that we have in stock and we got a few new ones and this is one of the new ones that we have. Isn't this amazing? And this is one of those cave sateens which has that really soft finish on there. So what we've done is that they have our real secret or our normal names on them but if you were looking to select one of them maybe jot it down that you're thinking cave one or such, okay? So we've numbered all of them by the designer and then a number so that you can easily reference them. Make sense? Okay, so uh, we have this one, and maybe I can put them in order here. I just got excited and was like shuffling them. Okay, so this was an enchanted. This one here is a mad plaid. We also have this mad plaid in a, so that was gray. This one is turquoise. Okay, is this exciting? Does everybody like this option of being able to choose a wide back to maybe finish a project or two? Oh my goodness, this is exciting. Then we have the tree fungi in contrast. That's number four. We have the lotus leaf in purple as cave number five. Il Fiore, oh, this is so amazing. We had been waiting and waiting and waiting on this one for a long time, and we have some in stock now. That one is Cave 6. Enchanted in green, Cave 7. 
Melifiore in pastel, cave eight. Onion rings in black, cave nine. And tree fungi in pink, cave 10. Now we have some tulas that we wanna talk about. So we have here Curiouser and Curiouser Color Wonder. That's Tula 1. Same print, Color Daydream is Tula 2. Sketchier in paper is Tula 3. And then we have the latest collection, Daydreamer in Lagoon, Tula 4, at Pineapple, Tula 5, and Guava, Tula 6. For Tim Holtz, we have a vintage Gothic neutral here that we're calling Tim 1. Dictionary neutral Tim, Tim 2. Expedition Multi Tim 3. Memorandum Tim 4. And Street Maps Tim 5. To round out our collection, we do also have a Victoria Findlay Wolf that is Victoria Findlay Wolf number one. Okay, so these are the options that you have here. So if you had wanted, instead of a stack, some wide back, if you had a fat eight pack, you would get one yard. And if you had a fat quarter pack and you wanted to substitute, you could take two yards. And of course, when you have make your selection, you can go ahead and then add yardage to it that we'd be able to then give you a continuous piece at the size of your choosing. So we have a question. So question is, do we want to pre-wash our wide backs? And my answer is yes, I do like to pre-wash my wide backs. I don't always pre-wash everything else, but I like to pre-wash my wide backs. And the reason why I do that is that uh, you wanna make sure that since the wide backs often shrink a little bit more, than your traditional 45 inch wide fabric that you would pre-shrink anything prior to quilting it because what would be horrible is that if you quilted it all up and then your back shrank more than your top and then it would just be sad. So uh, the cape and the tulas have that really nice sateen finish and then the Tim Holtz and the Victoria Findlay Wolf are your standard 108s. Any other questions? Do you have a suggestion for which one would be a good dress for Gavin Lamont Cap in Delft? Oh, well, we have a little bit. Oh, yes, I need to repeat the question. What might be a good option for Gathering No Moss in Delft? And I have a couple for you. So I don't have the Delft in front of me, but I think what would be really nice. We have a couple combinations. So would be cafe number three is one option. So this is the mad plaid. And we also have here, I love this tree fungi in uh, contrast, and that's cafe four. And I can hold them up after I read you the other options. And then Millefiore. Cave six. This one would work. This is a Victoria Findlay Wolf. It would work. Of course, anything would work, but those would probably be the best. We also have, well, we have a couple more. The Millefiore in the pastel. That is Cave eight. And then we have the Lotus Leaf Cave in purple. Okay.
so you can see them again in their glory. I'm just seeing them in different, so that they can kind of see behind me, so that they can see Kafi. Kafi land, okay? I'm just making up words. Kafi land. All right. Any other questions about the widebacks? I will, the question is, how much backing do you need for the gathering no moss? And you know what? I happen to have the pattern right here, and I would love to be able to share with you. So the quilt finishes 77 by 92, if made according to size, and it recommends that you get two and a half yards of the wide back, or seven and a half yards of a traditional uh, traditional 44 inch. And so the two and a half yards would be 90, so it'd be 90 by 108, which would be ample and allow for just a titch of shrinkage because the size of the quilt is 77 by 92. So speaking of this, Thank you so much because this is a perfect segue into talking about this gorgeous quilt. So this one here, this was the gemstone that Cindy made here. And it's this really fun, simple block that you can use to showcase your fabric. And you can see here, I believe she chose the exact same fabric combinations, or maybe not, of what was recommended in the color layout here. So we had sold this as a program, I believe last summer, and we have a couple patterns left over, full-size patterns. So I'll show you how to make the block, but if you want the full-size pattern with all of the great color layouts, we have these patterns available for $10. And we also have a few of the collectible reusable totes here. <gasps> So, which are available for $10 as well. Get the combo for $15. Very, very exciting. So we have a limited number available. Let Tammy know if you had wanted to get that. But let's talk a little bit about the block. So it's a 13 inch block. And Frank, let's take a peek overhead. So I did a block here in Tim Holtz, okay? So I used the pack, fabrics from the pack. So you can see I used the letters here. And so if you knew what it said, and you knew it said Halloween and trick or treat and candy and pumpkin, you might say it's Halloween. But if you didn't know that it said that, you would just see cool collage of letters. And if you're Lisa, you might think that I was obsessed with men's names. Hal, Rick, Andy, you know. So I, I don't necessarily think so. I just was trying to choose something non-Halloween-y and it was just kind of funny how it ended up that way. Um, and I chose to use uh, basics on the outside. So you could use this here, this ring on the inside creates a little bit of a shimmer for here and then your base units here um, with the worn crock go around. So that is the base block. It's 13 inches and I'm going to show you how you can cut that out, okay? So I have here a fat quarter. Da -da -da. Let's see if I can position this underneath. Okay. So here we go. I had a stack of three fat quarters here of Tula, okay? And I stacked them, one, two, three, to cut them out because essentially you can, if you take three fabrics, you mix them up so that one is your center square, one is your background, and then one is that darker accent, okay? So you need to cut a Five and, five and a half inch strip. And 
oh, I'm sorry, two five and a half inch strips is what you need to cut from your fat quarter. You have this left over, which you could have a mix and match block, but in order to have a complete unit, you would cut it like this. On your first five and a half inch strip, you're going to cut a five and a half inch square, and then you're going to cut eight two and a half by five and a half inch pieces. Okay. So you're actually only going to be able to cut one, two, three, four, five, six from your first strip. And from your second strip, you're going to cut two. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. With the remaining, you are going to cut the subcut that into a five inch strip. Ooh. And then you're going to cut a 10 inch rectangle off, so five by 10, and cut eight two and a half inch squares. Okay, so this is what you need for the block. Following me? All right, so we're gonna put this away, and then we're gonna mix and match to make our block, okay? So let's see, what do we want our center of our block? Do we want it to be, I think we should have it be this one. Okay, so this is the center. So I'm gonna take these two and set them aside. And then I'm gonna come around with my light fabric here. Doesn't that sound like a good idea? My light fabric, so I'm going to have this be The ring what do you think oh you know what I forgot to cut something else out of it I knew I knew there was something else I was forgetting to cut <laughs> see this is why we need to like you know talk about things okay so then what we need to do because we need to have the big blocks that are here right so those are four and a half inch blocks I don't have a rotary cutter. So Tammy's going to get me a rotary cutter. And so, you know, why not? So you will need more of your fat quarter. And we need a total of four, four and a half inch pieces here. And she is finding that for us. So it's that top shelf. I have the rotary cutter. <laughs> okay. That's a kind of giant. Okay, so we have a giant ruler because, you know, why not? Okay, so I'm going to cut. I'm going to pretend like I had made a really nice straight cut there, okay? And you would not be sawing, but you do want to make sure you go straight ahead. All right, very good. So you have that much left over. Then we're going to open this up because I don't want to saw on TV for you. TV. And we are going to cut four and a half inch squares. All right. So, could rotate the mat, rotate the fabric here. Da, 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 da. Don't. You can move it. Just be very careful. Okay, so four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. And so do you see here, I'm using this little straight edge. You probably can't see it, but I'm using this straight for my bottom and then cutting on the edge there, or lining it up here. So four and a half here, lining it up on the bottom there and making my cut. Okay, very good. Whew. So then we really only have this left. So that makes that makes us feel better. All right. So, now what we're going to do is that we are going to use for the it's this one that is going to be the big square that we use. Okay? You're going to say, "Julie, that doesn't look right." But yes, it does. And 
um, Tammy, can you take down the logo? Okay, so then, all right, so then what we're going to do is we're just going to square and a square these guys. So we're going to take this color here, okay, and we square and a square or snowball them. So the combination of the three fat quarters makes three blocks. So we'd go here using our quick quarter ruler, sewing extra style corner and then okay so you'll do that okay so that is how you will do it and then you put it together as a nine patch to make your 13 inch block so we'll take a look at our finished Tim Holtz block Okay. Da, da, da. And you can see how it goes together. You could, if you had wanted to, use the same fabric here as you do for here, but you get that really nice sparkle if you switch it around. And then, as I said, three fabrics make three blocks. Okay? So with 12 fat quarters, you could make a three by four set. So we're just sharing how to make the block, but um, if you had wanted to have something that looked more, um, did something exactly like this, we have this pattern available. And then they also have a little bit different of a look where they are not doing the complete swap like we did. So you can see here that it is, you could have it where all of your insides are green, okay? I believe we have that. So they didn't do all of the fabric switching that we did, but I was just sharing with you that from a fabric perspective, you absolutely could have interchangeable parts, which could be really interesting for one of your fat stack projects. So this particular project is more suitable to a fat quarter bundle rather than a fat eighth bundle. If you chose to cut with a fat eighth, you would not be able to have the cohesiveness of being able to flip things around, okay? So now that I completely confused everyone, um, does anybody have any questions? So, City did a fabulous job. I've also seen a couple other variations come in with the official fabrics. They're gorgeous. This particular quilt was inspired by a, let's look overhead, Frank. It was inspired by an antique quilt from CAFE. So you can see, you know, this is really, really traditional fabrics. And I can see this out of, you know, uh, Joe Morton fabric, or you could do it in Kansas Trouble fabric or uh, scrappy fabric, Any anything the darker colors. So really a fun, versatile block. We've seen this style of block in many other dimensions, many other sizes, and it is super fun. So enjoy, and thank you so much, Cindy, for sharing your beautiful quilt with us. We really appreciate being able to hang it as our backdrop. So as a reminder, we do have uh, the pattern available full size, $10, and the awesome project bag, $10, or the combo, $15. Woo-hoo-hoo! -hoo. I know there was, uh, when we first came out, people were wanting to buy the bag, and we weren't able to buy any extra bags, and so, uh, but now I have a few available, and so while supplies last, please reach out and let us know if you would like one. All right, so now we are going to talk about a couple other really fun things. So we have also been talking during our Free Spirit Club about Toes in the Sand. And this is month four of Toes in the Sand. Heidi went ahead and made us 
uh, black four. And then this particular month, we have a partial seam. You know, Julie Herman doesn't do that too often, but she did do that this month. And so we wanted to make sure we could talk about it. So let's look overhead. And we have both of these beautiful blocks here. Uh, so with the hex and more and this gorgeous book, Toes in the Sand, 10th edition. We have some available still. And if you signed up for the block of the month fabrics from us, you receive the stack of fat eighths every single month to go with your two blocks. This makes the lap size. If you had wanted to make the queen size, you would go ahead and make more blocks. And, 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 oftentimes our customers have found that they're able to make all of the necessary, they're able to make uh, two sets of blocks with the fat eighths. Sometimes they just need to add a little bit more, but I think this month you might even be able to eke out both from just the one pack. All right, so with the block here, let's talk about this. So with our partial seam, so to get started, we would be putting the triangles on your half hex, okay? And then what you do is you have this triangle that we're building on, but we are only going to piece it part of the way. Okay, we're gonna leave this loose. And then for the next round, we can put on this unit here, okay? Just like we would like normal. So the partial seam is only at the beginning. Put on the third round here. And then you can see, we can just take the block, flip it over, and finish the seam. Do to do. I would finish coming out rather than trying to sew into it because you could end up pleating it and ending up with a bubble, which would be sad. So you'll position it and sew from the center down. Okay, so really a partial seam is not difficult. It just takes a moment to think about how to get that super secret triangle in the middle, okay? So the glory of the, sim of the partial seam lets us put this triangle in the center, which is super exciting, okay? So what we're doing is piecing three units like that. You have that guy in the center. You're adding him here. Then you're putting this side on and this side on as normal, and then you're just finishing that up. Super cool. So Julie has done some really amazing videos every month along with it. So if you don't already follow her and are part of her Sew Along book uh, group on Facebook, please do. And she puts videos up there and she also has live interaction sections to show how to best cut with her rulers and how to work with her patterns. Speaking of Julie Herman, this is really fun. Her latest program that she's working with is kicking off a sew along for quilts for baby and beyond. This has some really great projects in it and she has been, she kicked off a program. I believe she did a video today. So that's Thursday the 7th. And she did a Quilts for Baby and Beyond book overview today on her Facebook session. Next week, she's going to be talking about the Super Sidekick Ruler, giving you an overview of that. And so we do have both the books and the rulers here, as well as all of the, all of the information for the special kits that she, or quilts that she put together using the daydreamer line from Tula. 
So we are going to be cutting those kits to order. If you would be looking for one of those, just let us know and give us a 48 hours turnaround. Um, as we come up on the different ones that she's introducing, we will absolutely put another shout out to let you know that we have those available to you because I know some of them, some of you might want to make it just like Julie, whether it's me, Julie, or that Julie. And you can play along with her through the entire months of April and May to walk through this great book. If you aren't familiar with this book, it is another way to use her rulers of the Hexamore and Super Sidekick. Actually, just the Super Sidekick on this one. She does always have her templates in here. So if you didn't want to buy the ruler, which you want to buy the ruler, but let's just say you wanted to try one of these, you can go ahead and try it without buying the ruler and still be able to successfully make the quilt. I love, love, love that Julie has done that and included the templates in her book. One of the things that she talks about which is really exciting, is how to, especially if you're sewing for a baby, is how to make the whole room go together. And so one of the things that she talked about last week, and we'll continue about talking about throughout the whole program, is that in order to get everything working together, she actually recommends purchasing a whole bolt of fabric. And so if you come to Patchworks, you know that we have tons and tons of fabrics, but we don't have a lot of full bolts. So sometimes even when you're looking for a large quilt bed, it can be challenging to find. And so if you're looking for 15 yards in order to make your crib sheets and work on your projects and do everything that she wants you to do to have a coordinated nursery setting, we thought, you know what would be super exciting is we're going to try something different because, you know, let's just try lots of different things here with our fun free spirit group. And what we're going to offer you is the ability to choose your own 15 yard bolt to pre-order and we're going to offer you a 5% discount on it. So that is super, super exciting. So that's available to anybody who's watching with us. We are going to put together a uh, a special order and you have between from shopping now through midnight on April 13th in order to go and shop. So I'm going to show you where you can shop from because because we're doing special orders we can do anything we want, right? All right, so come and look. I have my computer ready and we're going to show you something exciting. All right, who's excited? Okay, so can you see this here? We are going to go to the Free Spirit website, which is a place where I order fabric, where I talk to my fabric rep as well. And the place that we're able to do this are ones that are shipping now, while supplies last, reorder fabrics, the K fabrics that are in stock, we also could do the Anna Marie Horner that I don't often, or that we don't typically carry, okay? So this is really cool. If you wanted to make a whole project with something that we don't often carry, you can do that. So to shop, you're still ordering from me, but you're able to browse here, okay? So you could shop and you could go to, I don't know, the BioGeo here. So this is the one, that fabric line that we got in that went super, super quick. And you could say, okay, this, rainbow, I want the rainbow bio geo two and multi. Okay. So what I would need you to do is to let me know exactly what this is. And you could send me a link for this to my email. You could print this sheet out on your printer and bring it into me. But I would need to know exactly what it is called. And I would gladly, gladly, gladly order you this bolt. So in order for this to work, you're going to let me know what it is. I'm going to invoice you. You will pay it and we'll be able to take advantage of a super special opportunity for you. And why am I giving you a cutoff? Well, I'm giving you a cutoff because we want to make sure that those who want to take advantage of this offer 
can do so and be able to get things in a reasonable amount of time. So when we're ordering things like this, we need to make sure that we have several bolts together. I can't just order one here and one here and one here. So we're just offering to do this for a whole group and get together these bolts. If you'd like, you can order more than one bolt, no problem, okay? And we would love to put this together for you. So it will take a couple weeks, two to four weeks for it to ship. And before I would invoice you, I would make sure that it is in stock because it makes no sense for us to try to order something that might not be here for forever. And this only would work on things that are current, not futures. So not tiny beasts, not Paris, deja vu, nothing like that. We're talking about current things. We also have a handful of bolts in stock uh, in the store that would be ready to go, but otherwise uh, anything from here. And you also could choose from the entire category of solids as well. So if you wanted to. So any questions, Tammy, on any of this that we're talking about? Um, just a question about the discount for club membership. So it is in addition to any club discount, but it is open to anyone. So if you are just watching um, and you are not a member of our club, let us know and we can hook you up with a 5% discount off of the bolt. And the Regular width fabric comes 15, the wide backs come 12. Any other questions? No, but I did put the link in the chat box. So okay. All right, so hopefully you think that that's fun and exciting, and we just thought that we'd do something different. You know, we're trying different things as we share uh, different opportunities that present themselves to us, and I thought it was interesting because oftentimes I never think about um, utilizing uh, a whole bolt of fabric like that for being able to, you know, make a quilt back and, um, you know, with babies. Babies aren't always on my brain, so I don't think about, you know, the crib sheets and things like that. But she's going to talk about how to make the crib sheets, how to do this, how to do this, how to do that. And she has it perfectly calculated for how to use it with a 15 yard put up of fabric which of course you can use any fabric in the whole world, but why not take advantage of all the beautiful free spirit fabrics? And then since we're doing that special order, I thought I would just let anybody in the world who wanted to do this, um, not in the world, in our group, in our group, in our group, take a step back, in our group. <laughs> Sure, sure, sure. So um, the price range, so it depends from a solid to um, our solid price right now is on a free spirit bolt, Frank? $12.99. No, solid. Oh, are we per yard? Are we $8.99? Is it $8.99? And the, for the Tula, yeah, so $8.99 for the Tula solids. And then we have fabrics that range $11.99, $12.99. The digitals get to be more expensive, $13.99, $14.99. So you have a wide range of per yards. For your wide backs, your wide backs range from $19.99 to, I believe, $24.99. So that is why I would have you show me what you'd like. We will work up an invoice that you can either pay or reject at that point, okay? Can you show them again how to get to where they Sure. So the question is, can I show you how to get to where you'd want to go? So what we will do is, I'm going to pop open this. So is this exciting? I think so. Okay, great. They sound excited. Okay, I'm so excited that you're excited because I'm excited too. And if this, you know, so we can just try this first. So you come to the Free Spirit website. So freespiritfabrics.com. Tammy has shared the link. Then you come here and you're going to go to fabric lines. And we're not looking at just released. We are not looking at shipping soon. We are looking at shipping now while supplies last. 
reorder fabrics. Okay, so you click on here. So let's look at the reorder fabrics. And you are going to look at, let's say here, foundations. Okay, so foundations by Tim Holtz. And you think, I really, really want this Royal Mail Neutral Foundations. Okay, so I would want to know this skew, this title okay and then I can look up to make sure that it's in stock and what that price would be okay does that answer the question so you are not able to build a cart here because you're not a retailer and we are talking in 15 yard increments okay and we do reserve all rights in case if something seems crazy, but I don't know how this would be crazy because somebody would just want a bolt or two to make backs or such. And if they don't want a bolt, they could put it on the back. So we are encouraging this to be uh, individual bolts for the for our for our friends watching the show. Any other questions? Okay. All right, let me pop this out here. Okay, so that's exciting. We'll try this out and um, see how it goes and we can uh, talk about how this makes sense in other applications depending on the success of this little experiment. All right. Last thing that I want to share with you here is a project that I teased you with. If you watch us every week, you saw that I was working on a little pillow. So this is not free spirit, but it's super cute and it's Easter time. And so I had to show you. So I put together a pillow from the Zootropolis book. So we had someone come in today and they said, oh, I really love the pillow that you made, but I don't want to make the quilt. No problem. The designers from Sassafras Lane had shown each of their designs done up as a pillow or as the quilt. So you get the pattern for how to make the pillow as well as each of the fun little blocks in the book. And then Lisa went ahead and she put together these super cute kits that have the bunny fabrics for the applique picked out there. We have the fabric, a half yard of fabric to make the back just like I made it. And then the carrot and the orange for the churn dash, the background and your binding. We also include a 22 inch zipper here so that you can finish your pillow. I finished my pillow by putting the zipper all the way across. In the book, they have you put tabs on either side, which is a totally uh, accurate or a reasonable way to finish as well. I just chose the simplicity of going all the way across in mine. I have done a little bit of basic quilting on my back. I used fusible fleece on the back and front. That's not included in the kit. Uh, and then we have 14 inch pillows in stock. And Frank, how much is a 14 inch pillow? He's gonna take a peek to show us, tell us how much the 14 inch pillows are. $7.99 is the price today for a 14 inch pillow. The kit is $29.99 and the book, which is separate is $28. So the book is definitely an investment, but you have 32 fusible animals which are super cute and you can make different pillows or quilts and we have several kits available we have se so several kits of this guy here we have several this and then we have different kits available for different individual animals and um, so you can 
make your own pillows using the little block kits that we have, but the block kits do not have the pattern in it, just the fabric. Okay, so that is super exciting. And for this, let's Frank, let's look overhead. What I wanna share here for the applique is that I did a satin stitch, okay, around the bunny and around the ears. For the eyes, I started doing a satin stitch, but then I got really frustrated because it wasn't looking right. So I did a triple stitch, and then the triple stitch is also what I did to make the little cute um, crease in the eye underneath. Go towards Frank a little bit. And then I used the, I used the triple stitch to sort of embroider here my nose and mouth. You could do that by hand if you had wanted to as well. What I did is I actually drew, I drew, transferred the design with, I just placed um, some stabilizer on top and just followed that and then ripped the stabilizer away. So I used the stabilizer as sort of a, a tracing paper. And then I'm in love with this. So instead of doing a stitch down, I said to Lisa, I said, should we just play with it and like make this dimensional since we're not worried about it being on a child's quilt? And she said, sure, sure, sure. So what we did is we took full strands of the floss and we used the Orofil floss color 1114, which we have in stock here. And then we just tied some knots. If you wanted to fray it, you could. If you wanted to be fancier and do additional knots, you could do that as well. But I just thought it was a really interesting, nice finish that added some texture to it. And question. A, what is a triple stitch? So a triple stitch is a option on your machine, which is actually a utility stitch, okay? So for, for garments, sometimes you do a triple stitch to make sure that your seams aren't going anywhere. And so a triple stitch is that it goes back. So essentially for every stitch, it's going three times. And what it can be really nice is that when you're using it for applique for embellishment on your quilt is that it lays down a thicker stitch without you having to try to do the same thing exactly in the same way by stitching over it three times. And if you'd use a thicker thread, like a 40 weight thread, instead of your 50 weight thread, it will look thicker yet. Does that make sense? Okay. So the Aura Floss comes on these really cool wooden spools and there is 18 yards of six strand cotton floss on here. And we just used a nice uh, thick embroidery needle with a large eye to be able to run this through after we had done this. So I had done that final embellishment on it, or actually Lisa did, after it was completely assembled before we put the pillow in was when we added the extra floss for the green on the carrot. All right. Lastly, I just want to share with you um, the trick on the zipper because sometimes zippers scare people and I don't want you to be scared. So Frank, let's look overhead. So for my back, I would take a piece of fabric and fuse it to some fusible fleece, okay? At that point, you can stitch it. And I just used a, on this one, it's gonna be really hard to tell, but I gave it some texture by just using a serpentine stitch, okay? Just playing with it. You have a billion different um, stitch designs on your machine. Go ahead and try one. I did use my walking foot. You can play with different weights and different colors of thread as well. After you have embellished as desired, you will go ahead and split your top, okay? You're going to split it to put your zipper in. Now, in this particular case, I chose to not do it in the center. You could do it in the center as I did on this one, 
or you could put it offset. After you have spliced it, you are going to put your zipper on one side. So I'm going to take a zipper and show you what I mean. So you can see here, here's the outside and here's the wrong side. So we are going to take the zipper and put right sides together, okay? And you can choose either the top or the bottom, whichever one you would like. And what we are going to do is right sides together, you are going to stitch with a straight stitch this in. And can you see here, there are, I don't know, it's probably a little fuzzy. There is this like dotted line on your zipper on the back side there. That's the line that I stitch on there. Okay, so it's like right there and I, that's the line that I use to stitch. It's about a quarter inch in. And I just use my quarter inch foot. I do not use a zipper foot. If you have a zipper foot, by all means use it, but I just use my quarter inch. Then what you're going to do is you are going to roll it and then you are going to edge stitch it. Okay, so that would look just like this. Okay, now I used contrasting thread here. So don't pay attention in case if I went off just a little bit, you'll use a matching thread. But I just did a little bit of an edge stitch there. Or maybe it's a top stitch. I think an edge stitch might technically be closer. But then what it does is that it finishes off this back side so that my little edge is enclosed there and it has a nice finish to it. So then guess what we're going to do? We are going to repeat on the other side. So we're going to put the other part, right sides together along this edge, and we will stitch. You can use your wonder clips to position, and then you will sew along there, and then you will flip it and do your edge stitch. You'll want to make sure before you shorten anything or trim it down that you move your zipper pull. Very important, move your zipper pull to the center. If you don't, you are going to not have a way to open or close your pillow. Ask me how I know. All right, and then before you trim it, go ahead and do a stitch back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, so that you secure your piece into a square or pillow back rectangle. Trim to size, and then you can assemble. When you are assembling, all we did is we put the back or the front on top of the back, right sides together, and finish it with a binding. And I did a machine finish bind. Two and a half inch binding. Simple, simple. So the instructions for that are in the book um, if you have never made that before. So super, super simple. Any questions on that? No questions on that. So we have some of those available. Oh, do we do have a question? Do I save the stopper at the end? So do you mean the stopper, the, the, zipper stopper. the zipper stopper? Okay, so I always cut off my metal ends. I personally don't like them. Uh, someone came in today and they said they had, um, oh, you want to make sure to never sew over those metal stoppers. You'll be sad. Your machine will be very sad if you do that. Okay, and um, someone came in today and they showed the trick where you take any leftover cutoff and then you trim the excess edge off and then you use the little zipper teethy part, zipper teethy part, as a uh, zipper pull, which is really, really cool. I don't know that I'd seen that, uh, so it was pretty cool. And um, so save your extra parts. And if you have really long zipper, what you can do as well is you can just get a pack of extra zipper pulls to make more mini zippers from your extra zipper. So anyhow, I always like to use longer rather than shorter. But if you had wanted to, you can also do the tab version, which would be completely correct. I just wanted to run my zipper end to end. 
So, oh my goodness, I had so much to show you today. I hope you weren't overwhelmed. Uh, so we are still waiting on some extra yardage, which is why we only are offering two packs today. Uh, but I hope that you will be excited at the option of choosing one of those great wide backs that we have in stock as an alternate option for going back into the fabric buffet. Uh, we are so excited to be building the different fabric buffets as well. If you've been shopping in the store, you'll see all of the different options for all the different 12 packs that we have hanging around the store for both this club as well as our Moda University Club. So feel free to ask us because we would love to be able to hook you up with one of those packs or more of those packs. If you are a Free Spirit Club member, you will be getting an email that has the layout instructions for making one of the blocks today that we were talking about, as well as getting some inspiration, having more instruction on how to go about uh, requesting bolts of fabric, and a little bit of information on the quilts for baby and beyond quilt along that Julie Herman has just kicked off. We are super excited and anxiously awaiting for our tiny beasts to arrive either later April, but very likely probably into May. And uh, we do have pre-orders of that available on our website. Don't worry, we have ordered lots and lots and lots, which is super, super exciting. And we continue to order and reorder all of those basics as well. I'd like to thank you so much for tuning in tonight. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comments, send us a message, send us an email, give us a call, or stop on in. Also, as a reminder, remember we are closing an hour early on Saturday to go celebrate Heidi getting married. Hoot, hoot. So we look forward to seeing you. Have a great night, happy quilting, and we'll see you soon.